guys, we are back and look, <laughs> two Tato basketballs at home in the garage. How bizarre is this? It's hard enough finding one of these guys and now I have two of them and it doesn't stop there because uh, some interesting developments have happened since I've got this machine and looked into it a little bit more. But first of all, there's something I've got to tell you because there's something quite exciting that we might be able to find out about these cabs. And the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the original flyer. So if we look here at the flyer guys for basketball, you know, there's not a lot of, there's no pictures of this game anywhere on the internet. There's one on Clov, but we'll get back to that in a moment. Now, the thing about this picture on this uh, really cool flyer from Tato showing all their games of this current period is that the cabinet doesn't look the same colour. It's a uh, silver and a uh, you know wooden base at the bottom. And that's certainly not the case with the two cabinets that I have here. And we can see these other machines they had there, Western Gun, that was pretty popular in the US, the Midway licensed version of it, I believe, Avenger, I'm not sure about that one. And down the bottom we've got Soccer, that's a variation of one of these uh, cabs that are this sort of sh sh um, shape, so there's another Soccer, I'll show you that in a moment. But there's an Astro Race down the bottom there you can see. And in fact you can see the Astro Race on the right hand side of that in the funny style cabinet as well. So you can see they released them in, in the two different styles. But that Astro Race, same deal guys with the colouring, right? It's um, got the nice brown wood, slightly looks slightly darker than the basketball. But again the sort of silver or white sides. And if we go to the next page we can also see that they had a attack UFO cabinet that was also had the brown on the front and the white on the side. So it's had a bit of a common theme, the structure of this. You know, the controls were changed over, the marquee was changed over, but effectively it was always the same cab and always the same colours. And the interesting thing here is that once we go to the next page, we can see three more cabs. We have an alley pong, a pro hockey, and a soccer. And you probably spotted it already, guys. <laughs> so the pro hockey and the, and the soccer, again, are the brown front and the silver sides, but the alley pong is yellow front, brown sides. And that is exactly what we have behind us. So, are these actually alley pongs? Are these actually the very first game made in Japan, released in Japan in the arcade market, the copy of Atari Pong? Japanese version of it, the big release of video games as we know it in Japan started with alley pong, <laughs> arguably, in the arcades at least. Is that what we've got behind us? And I have my suspicions. Now guys, before I went out to, to pick up this one, um, I sort of thought, well, it'd be cool if there was something else in these cabinets that could sort of show if these were alley pongs or not and, and have been converted. And I don't think they've been converted, guys, in terms of a conversion kit for operators. That was a concept that came a lot longer in the, you know, a lot longer away in the piece when manufacturers realised that, you know, operators didn't want to buy whole new arcade games and so they would, you know, give them a kit to change it over. I think from a manufacturing point of view, they chose the same cabinet for a lot of these Pong style games because they're all really similar, easier to manufacture, the same. So why design a new one? You've got a whole load of extra costs in manufacturing. So it makes perfect sense from a manufacturing sense, uh, point of view. And my thoughts are that maybe, maybe, uh, rather than it being a kit, to replace over the top of an alley pong, for example. And maybe in the factory, they just had too many of the alley pong machines as they started doing basketball and the ones on going on from that. And they just used up the cabinets um, that were there and uh, put the control panel and the marquee of basketball in, in place of the alley pong, because that's really the only two differences in this cabinet. So, what I want to do now, guys, is walk you and show you around 
these two cabinets and what I found. And of course, we want to see if this guy is working um, because they did advertise that it was working. And well, let's take a look at that. But first of all, I want to show you a few things. Right, so I did a bit of a spot the difference <laughs> between the two. And definitely the new guy that I picked up is much better condition. Now, how about this? <laughs> How lucky am I here, right? So my one didn't have the coin door, but had the bottom one <laughs> for the coin box and of course vice versa. So I can now take that uh, coin one across and place it on there and we will have a complete cab. If we look at the control panel, certainly the one that I had picked up originally, um, it's got quite a few marks and rust spots on it. And this one is definitely a lot cleaner. I have not cleaned this up at all guys, either machine actually even the original one, I did not clean this up since I bought it because the intention was always to bring it out of storage and do a bit of a restore. So I've left it as I effectively found it. So again, definitely better there. Um, this is really filthy and needs uh, cleaning up, but no real scratches on there. There wasn't any on my one. I think I might have wiped that down actually. It looks a bit cleaner. Now up onto the marquee area, my one actually has some, um, if you could pick that up there, it's a bit harder because of the reflections, but it's got some graffiti uh, just up there, otherwise it's perfect. This one is perfect, um, just needs a clean. So there's a difference there. Up the top here we've got this silver banding. And interestingly on this one, it's very much, it's still a um, piece that's been stuck on, but it's a, uh, you know, it's almost like a furniture edge piece. So that's very different. Now mine is broken on this corner, um, but it does seem like that was what was maybe on one of the original versions of the cabinet before they moved on to putting this on. This is actually T-molding. You can actually see around the, around the back, the top here. There we go, it's cut in T-molding and the other one isn't. It's just a wooden piece on there. So. Again, <laughs> some uh, subtle differences. You'd never think you'd find things like that, right? And of course, getting two of these machines together, uh, such a, a rare opportunity. Now, of course, the obvious thing you might've seen here is these melted T-molding. And I originally thought that might've been just one of the problems of my particular machine. Well, guess what? <laughs> we have the same problem on the one I just picked up. So this must be a really, uh, soft metal sensitive to heat and I suggest that this has just been from sun you know being in the sun a bit and it just you know picking up all that heat getting really hot melting and then just shortening itself as it sort of drops down the cabinet and of course it's not so bad down the bottom here small rip down the down the very bottom but uh, I would suggest that's probably because you know most of the time where these cabinets are placed they're getting heat from the sun up high rather than down low. Uh, it's almost like they were in the same uh, in the same room together, given how they're both damaged quite in a similar way. Um, now, look, just in, in with that, look, talking about that in particular, I want to actually just bring back attention about the Clov picture, the only picture that I've seen of this game anywhere in terms of a real one. And if you look at the picture in Clov, it actually has A, the missing coin door, and B, the wrinkles on here are the same wrinkles. Four across here, and on this side, we've got the little ding in the middle here, and then the, the other ones at the top. It's the same ones, guys. And I just find that that can't be by fluke. This must be the machine that someone took a picture of. Um, and put up on Clove originally. So I just think that's uh, <laughs> just incredible. Um, and listen guys, if you know of any of the series in this series of Tato machines, these early Tato discrete logic machines, if you know of anyone who's got one, if you've seen other pictures, if you know anything more about these machines, guys, please let me know. I'm really interested in them um, and finding out the, the history here because it all seems uh, like that history has been a little bit lost. So let's go around the back now and look at my original machine. Now this was the problem guys that I had when I first picked up this machine 
is I looked at the chassis and remember I picked this up years ago and I was, didn't know about chassis and all the rest of it, you know, and had very limited knowledge, so I wasn't really sure what I was looking at. But if you look on the side there, you can see that there's a wooden, uh, there's a wooden, looks like a wooden frame, it's actually metal with fox wooden coating on it. And that of course looks like very much like the outside of a TV casing. But this is all loose here, and originally when I looked at this, I thought this is just maybe an arcade chassis of some kind for the black and white monitor uh, or a tube. And you can see this tube's got some pretty bad flaking on the, uh, on the aquadag around there. Um, let me just get some uh, more light. Hang on a sec. Okay, there's some more light, guys. So, yeah, that uh, definitely looks like it is part of a TV, but I didn't sort of really pick up on it. And I've seen this sort of before, you know, hacked into the back of a normal TV for getting an arcade game, some of the early ones. Even like computer space, I think it had it hacked in like that. Now, in the base of this, guys, yes, it had the original PCB. So does this PCB work? I don't know. Never been turned on. It uh, had the cable cut. And regardless of that, I had no transformers. So you can sort of see in there where transformers were. There was no monitor transformer, no power transformer. So we were sort of missing all those guts. We did have what looks to be a sound card there, an amplifier rather. Um, and we've got some of the wiring. But yeah, we're missing that. And we're also missing the coin box. So even though we have the coin front, which is what we need for the other machine, we don't have the actual wooden box behind it so yeah i obviously had didn't have the skills or knowledge to even attempt to try and get this going guys i could have multiple issues with both the chassis the tube maybe this board doesn't work got no power supplies i wasn't probably sure about which power supplies to get i'm not even sure if i think there are schematics to schema there aren't sch there aren't some schematics for the tato basketball but there are schematics for Midway's TV basketball, which is the licensed version of this game that went to Midway. And of course, this is no, there's no logic in, in the, you know, this is not microprocessor, all this is discrete logic, guys. Uh, and so the game actually uh, also doesn't have any smarts in terms of any you know, AI or anything. You have to have two human players play it, much like the original Pong. Oh, and by the way, guys, just before we get to the new one and look at the differences in the back, remembering Pong very much had the style of outline for the monitor. Very similar, right? And of course, it was yellow. So it makes so much sense that the Ali Pong cabinet is that style. And Ali Pong, I think they called it Ali Pong because Ali Electric, perhaps it was the first electric. Uh, arcade video game released in mass in Japan. So let's look at the new one. Now on the new one we do actually also have another little metal trim down the bottom of the cab whereas uh, this one doesn't. And the other thing is that I never had a back door for this guy whereas the new one does have a back door. So now the exciting bit guys. <laughs> now the exciting bit. Well, I think it's exciting anyway. Imagine my surprise when I got there and they said, hey, look in the back, you know, make sure everything is there. And so I'm looking in the back and I can see here, okay, cool. It's got, um, there's the board and it's even got the original uh, metal chassis around it. Look at that with even the caution sticker still on there. And everything else is in here. We've got the front door coin. There's the mock, there's the coin box or the outside of it. We've got a uh, another sound power supply. We've got extra little switches here for where things plug in. And then we come up to the TV. Now when I first saw this TV, guys, I'm doing this very purposely on an angle. <laughs> So I'll show you in a minute. So when I saw this TV, I thought, oh shoot, they've taken out the original monitor and they've just put in some TV. I thought, damn, I thought it'd be great to have the original in here. And then I saw this. Yep, <laughs> Tato Ali Pong. So this was the original monitor 
that came with the alley pongs, which this cabinet seems to be telling me what it is. <laughs> and that was definite proof that, it, well, at least the, the cabinet and the TV are parts from Ali Pong. But it would seem to me that logically it was an Ali Pong and has been just converted probably by the factory before it went out. Now the other cool thing here guys is that we look back at the back of the TV and by the way this TV model number, I did a search on this, TR720S, nothing. There's nothing on the internet on it. Um, we've got these controls at the back here for the TV. Two of them you can access and the other ones you need a little tool to get to. Well, you know, when I looked at this TV, I can see the brown side there. I thought, well, hang on. Go to the chassis here. And here we go, guys. The same two knobs from the back. And then one, two, three, four pots. It's exactly the same as that. One, two, three, four, and the two knobs. So this is the chassis and the same TV, but all it is is it's missing its back black plastic piece. And uh, this would, this is actually loose. It would have been fitted up more inside there and the black plastic piece going behind the back. So it is the same. So guys, what else have we got here? We do have a little couple of badges and unfortunately it doesn't have the game name on here. There's nothing under there. It's a bit scratched, but we do have a serial number 69349. But on the other one, the interesting part of this is that this had nothing, but in the back of it was the plate. And that plate definitely fits onto here. And it looks like there's holes for what would have been another one up the top, very much the same as this side. But these plates, to get the light difference, these plates are different. <laughs> so the plate on the on my alley, uh, sorry, my basketball has the serial number actually on this plate at the top there, 68045. Now, if that's to be to believed, then this may very well be an earlier version. And the 69 one may have been in a later version, which may also explain the reason why they changed this to this T-moulding rather than having the sort of furniture fitting piece, which of course is broken off on here, so maybe that was a, an immediate problem, I don't know. So yeah guys, that's, uh, that's a lot of the differences between the two cabs, I guess the thing is that we need to look at before we also embark on something else, which I think is going to be exciting. <clears throat> we need to turn it on, right? It was working, right? We need to see if we can get this guy going. This is something that I wanted to see years ago when I picked it up, the original one. I thought it'd be so cool to get this restored and working, but in real terms, it's missing quite a few pieces and uh, I doubt that chassis and monitor sure would actually come to life. I'd have to probably get a new one. Who knows what state that PCB is in. If this works, <laughs> we might have shortcutted that situation. And of course, I'll be able to get that uh, coin cover over on the right hand side and have a complete working machine. So uh, I'll get us up on the tripod guys and let's turn it on. Here goes. And I must admit, I was a little bit worried because there's no, no sound. <laughs> and here it comes up. And funnily enough, <laughs> uh, I have mucked up the sink. <laughs> so I uh, need to get the sink sorted out. So yeah, as I was uh, demonstrating the controls, I uh, mucked up the sink. So yeah, it's uh, definitely working. I don't know why it counts down when it first starts up and what the CCC2 is. 
It's a little bit shaky. Uh, I haven't got the left-hand side uh, basket um, piece there. But other than that, it is working. I, if I push, if someone's rigged up the coin thing to the rejection button, if I push it, here we go. <laughs> Sound and all, guys. Now, the only thing is, is the controls are not working properly. So there's something obviously needs to be cleaned up in there to get those all nice and smooth again, but I'm hoping that will be a relatively easy fix. Um, this one, yeah, it's pretty uh, ordinary. But you can see, you can sort of, you, you control alternating characters, guys, and then when you, when you, uh, you know, flick it up, flick the uh, ball over to the other side, you're just trying to get a basket, and then this guy here is trying to protect the basket. And in a way, it's almost like an electronic version of, like, um, foosball. <laughs> a very early version of uh, foosball, I think, uh, electronic. And I can't believe the sound's going, guys. It's just absolutely crazy. Oh, by the way, this is, isn't as good as my other uh, cabinet. I'm missing a lot of the black paint on here, but, you know, that's probably an easy fix. I could probably do that without damaging the cabinet, just blacken that back up. But, but guys, it's all working. This needs a serious clean. And if I get these controllers working, then we have a working game. The monitor isn't great. It starts to separate up as it gets to the top there. I don't know if that's vertical linearity or not, or what's causing that. Um, but yeah, it's not great up the top end. But it's working. <laughs> How cool is that? It gets to the end of the game, runs out of time, and uh, no game over or anything. It just stops. Uh, and that's how, you know, early, early Pong was. And of course, the colour of this is only because of the colour of the screen. It's a black and white monitor behind there, guys. So, absolutely amazing. I'm so, so happy this is going. This is a piece of history. Seriously, if you have any information at all that can assist with unravelling what's happened here, why are these basketballs not in the wooden uh, and grey wood front and grey side cabinets as per the Tato uh, flyers. If you've seen any photos, I can't find any of any of the other machines like real life photos. I, I just haven't seen any machines with that silver or white side and the wooden front. So please, if you have any info there, drop it in the comments below. Um, I'd like to keep investigating <laughs> to find out. Um, I hope you enjoy the, the videos, I really do, but uh, until then I wouldn't mind having another game, but to do that um, uh, I need some money, so if you got a 20... <laughs> Like a robot.